The Nutty Putty Cave is one of the most dangerous caves in the world. This hydrothermal cave is located about 100 kilometers south of Salt Lake City, the capital of Utah. Because of its narrow passages, the Nutty Putty Cave used to be popular with cavers, such as John Jones. Unfortunately, his cave exploration ended with a fatal accident. It was a terrible shock to his family. In this video, we take you through the tragic story of John Edward Jones who became trapped in the Nutty Putty Cave. John Edward Jones was a 26-year-old boy who studied at the medical school in Virginia. He lived there with his pregnant wife, Emily Jones Sanchez, and his 13-month-old daughter, Lizzie. In November 2009, John, Emily, and Lizzie traveled back to Utah to spend the holidays with his family. The Jones family was a big close family of five boys and two girls. As children, John and his brother Josh explored caves with their father. Their father often took them on caving excursions all over Utah. John had a lot of experience exploring caves, but he had never been to Nutty Putty Cave. The Nutty Putty Cave is a hydrothermal cave. This means that there is an underground circulation of hot water loaded with dissolved minerals. Nutty Putty Cave has a total surveyed length and depth of 1,355 and 145 feet, respectively. This cave is popular for its narrow, slippery chambers, twists, turns, and bottlenecks. The difference in the sizes of the rooms has earned them names like the Birth Canal, the Aorta Crawl, the Scout Eater, and the Maze. It was 8 p.m. on Wednesday, the 24th of November, 2009, when John Jones, his brother Josh, and nine of his friends decided to finally enter the cave after so many years without having seen a blueprint of the cave. They had no idea that it was going to be a terrible day. The group was split into two. A few children and adults went to explore the less dangerous part of the cave, while John went deeper into the cave with a few others. John's team explored the largest room in the cave, the Great Slide, and was yearning for more. They decided to take on a trendy challenge of passing through the birth canal. The birth canal is known to be very narrow and slippery. After this, they would come out into a larger area. John went first and plunged further and further. The path was quite narrow for John, but he kept wriggling forward for a long time, for the passage had to lead into a larger room. He took a sharp turn and continued to squeeze until he could go no further. John and his team felt no danger until he had squeezed his way to a place of no return. The narrow space he had crawled into was barely 10 centimeters in diameter and 18 centimeters high, so John had little room to breathe. There was no way back. He started crawling with his fingers, hips, and belly, but soon realized he had made a big mistake. It is unclear what exactly went wrong. Some sources report that it went wrong in the birth canal, and some sources report that he missed the birth canal and went into another canal. However, John crawled down a crack and got stuck upside down in the tightest part of the opening. Josh tried to pull his brother out, but it took too many tries and he failed. Josh went for help and John could only wait and pray to get out. It was late when the group entered the cave, so it took Josh a while to find help. By the time help arrived, John had been upside down for three hours. At midnight, the volunteer rescuer, Susan, arrived on the scene. Hi, John. My name is Susie. How's it going? Hi, Susie. Thanks for coming, but I really want to get out, said John. Susan tried to pull him out as well, but failed to. After Susan, many other rescuers came, but they could not get John out. The first problem was the position he was stuck in. John had one hand pinned under him, and another was pushed back. His legs were free, but the rest of his body was trapped. John was also lying at an angle of 70 degrees, which made everything even worse. The rescuers made a mistake. It took too long to think of a way to rescue John. 
they considered many options, such as smearing the wall, using a pulley cord, and drilling a climbing cam around John's legs. In the end, they agreed that drilling away rock around John's legs would be the best method. The process was painful and slow. After an hour of drilling, they only managed to drill a few holes in the rock. Then, they started to pull again. By now, John had been upside down for over 12 hours and was having trouble breathing. The climbing cams and pulley system seemed to fail, but they did not stop. They brought a two-way radio into the cave and managed to lower it towards him so that he could speak to his wife, who was standing outside the cave entrance. John was getting worse and worse. He had been trapped upside down for 19 hours. His breathing became more and more difficult and his heart had to work twice as hard against gravity to squeeze the continuous flow of blood from his brain. The rescuers finally finished installing their pulley system and began pulling John out of the cave. Things seemed to look better. John was in a lot of pain, so they paused frequently. Finally, the rescuers managed to get John up high enough to make eye contact with the rescuer closest to him. Ryan Schertz was his first savior. He was flexible and had a strong immunity to claustrophobia. He had explored many caves in his childhood. John looked tired. His eyes were red and his face was dirty, but he seemed to be okay. How are you? asked Ryan Schertz. I'm upside down. I can't believe I'm upside down. My legs are killing me, answered John. John complained, but also had a smile on his face when he saw the rescuer. The team had been pulling for many hours, so they decided to take a rest. John also needed a rest because he felt a lot of pain. After the rest, they decided to pull John upright because he was almost unconscious. And at this point, it went horribly wrong. The whole team fell backwards like the rope was suddenly cut. Ryan Schertz was knocked unconscious by a rock. When he came to, he only saw dust. He looked for John, but because of the dust, he could not see him. When the dust had settled, he realized that the stone bow near John's legs, around which the rope had been tied, had been shattered, and that the nearest key had broken off. John had slipped down deeper through the crevice. Because of the rescuer's injuries, they had to change the first rescuer. The rescuer tried to put the rope around John's waist, but got stuck temporarily. There were several rescuers who tried to make contact with John. A loudspeaker was brought so that John could talk to his family. John's wife called out to him, but unfortunately, he never replied. Shortly afterwards, a doctor crawled into the Nutty Putty Cave and found John's lifeless body. At midnight on the 25th of November, 2009, John was pronounced dead at the age of 26. John spent 27 hours upside down in the Nutty Putty Cave. A total of 137 rescuers tried to save John. They had to leave this tragic place empty-handed. It was one of the toughest rescues volunteers have experienced in 29 years. The next day, the authorities determined that it was way too dangerous to remove John's body from the cave. Josh Jones gave a statement of gratitude toward the rescuers. Some rescuers may feel that they have let the family down, but the family members know that the rescuers did everything they could to free their son and brother. We just want to thank the rescuers, he said. Since this disaster, the Nutty Putty Cave has been permanently closed to the public. The cave became John Edward Jones's graveyard. It's a place to honor and respect our brother, Josh Jones said. John Jones was not the first caver to get stuck in the Nutty Putty Cave. The cave was first explored by Dale Green and friends in 1960. After them, there were several cavers and scouts who explored the cave. In 2004, two boys nearly died. These guys were much smaller than John, and yet it took several hours with a pulley to get them out. In 2006, a group of six cavers got stuck in the Nutty Putty, but were successfully pulled out. Experts had expressed concern about the dangerous nature of the cave. They wanted to know how many visitors had explored the cave. 
This number was estimated to be around 5,000 visitors per year. It also emerged that the cave was being visited late at night and without the use of proper safety measures. The rocks in the cave had become extremely slippery in recent years due to many cave researchers visiting the cave. On the 24th of May, 2006, the cave was temporarily closed and all necessary measures were taken. A fatal accident was just around the corner. The cave was reopened in 2009. After John's tragic incident, it was decided to close the cave permanently. The whole of the entrance was filled with concrete so that no one could enter anymore. In addition, a plaque in memory of John has been placed at the entrance. Following this tragic accident of John Edward Jones at the Nutty Putty Cave, a film was released on Netflix on September 16, 2016 called The Last Descent. If you know of similar stories, please mention them in the comments below the video so that we can investigate them. And maybe we can make a video about it. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.